Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create some random scripts to appear during your loading screen. This tutorial is sponsored by John John Games. So if you guys are looking for a channel with plenty of content, gaming and creativity, John's channel is the place to go. You should probably check out some of his socials too and stay up to date with all his latest content, loads of stuff to see. You can find all kinds of games on there, some Grand Theft Auto stuff, even a couple of tutorials that even I haven't covered. If you fancy being sponsored in one of these tutorials, just like John John Games, all you need to do is click that join button below and become a sponsor. Now, on with the tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development. There's always loads to see, loads to learn and loads to do. With that in mind, let's get to work. So before we begin, uh, it's worth saying that to do this, you first need to actually have a loading screen or even just a faked loading screen. I'm using a faked loading screen here. And the difference basically is that this is just a couple of things to simulate what a loading screen would look like. Uh, so basically it's just a black screen with the word loading with something turning to give the impression that it's loading. And obviously this will work on a real loading screen and should really be done on a real loading screen. But if you want to have like a fake loading screen like I've got, just to kind of segment between certain areas to give the visual impression of loading, then you can still do it. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to do this by adding in some UI, which is just going to be text. And that text will change depending on the number that we have generated. And each number will be associated with a different hint. So we'll start with three just for now, and we can build more and more as we go on. So let's start by adding in a game object. UI text and I'm going to have it somewhere up here and stretch it outwards. It doesn't matter how it looks, you know, this is your game at the end of the day. You don't have to have it the same color, same size, same font as me. Uh, I'm just making it look a little presentable at least. And um, we'll have size 30. So I want this hint to fade in and fade out. So what I'm going to do is on that, I'm going to click animation, click on create, and we'll call it hint text and save and hit record and the first thing we're going to want to do is set the alpha to zero so this will make it completely transparent and we want it to fade in let's say over the course of two seconds so 120 frames and we set it to 255 now we want it to stay 255 in the alpha for several seconds before we then fade out again so let's go to frame let's say 380 and then also set the alpha there as 255 again so i usually just click somewhere here and then set it back to 255 just so it sets that frame and then 120 seconds after so that's frame 500 it fades out once again and then we can press the record button click on project click on the animation and then untick loop time so it will look a little something like this so it's loading, hint that appears there, currently says new text, but don't worry about that because we're going to change that via some C-sharp coding. So let's right click, create C-sharp script, and we'll call this hint display, and let's open that up in Visual Studio. So if you are only going to display one single hint per loading screen, you could theoretically do this inside your start method. If you want to display multiple hints, then you would need to use a coroutine. I'm going to do a coroutine just to show you how you can do it several different ways. So first and foremost, we need to have two variables. The first one is going to be a random number. The second one is going to be that UI that we've just put into our scene. So public int and rand num, obviously short for random number. And the second one, public game object and hint disp. And obviously disp is just short for display. So because we're going to be using text, we also need to add something at the top. So in our namespace, using unity engine.ui. So the next logical step in all of this is to create the coroutine. So let's start by going i enumerator. Remember it's i enumerator, not i enumerable. And we'll call this hint tracker. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. 
So what we need to do first thing in the coroutine is to generate a random number. So one, two, or three. So rand num equals random dot range one comma four. Now I did say I was doing three, but I always say this whenever we do random dot range, uh, it will never generate that maximum number. So in this case, because we're using an integer, uh, we can either generate one, two, or three because it only ever generates up to that maximum number. It doesn't generate that maximum number. It generates up to. So in this instance, the previous number before it would be three. If we were using, for example, uh, a decimal number, uh, the number before it, so one decimal place would be 3.9. So it generates up to four, which would be 3.9. So long story short, it doesn't generate that maximum number. It generates the one below it. So we now need to say if rand num equals one, then do the following. It is hint disp dot get component text inside spiky brackets oh close bracket dot text equals and then your hint so always look around for coins or something like that again it's your hint that you're creating here so it's entirely up to you now what we can do is we can take that go below and create hint number two which is going to be red Locks sometimes contain lives. You know, anything, I guess. Obviously, creating an RPG, then this is going to be useful if you're saying there's a sword in a stone somewhere. Legend has it. Blue blocks will add 10 lives. You know, again, it could absolutely be anything. Uh, and then we're going to say um, yield return new wait, for, not wait for end of frame, wait for seconds. And we'll say 10 just for, in fact, I'll say nine just for now. So there is the way we actually display our different hints. And obviously in the start method, we have to activate that. So we say start co routine and in brackets hint tracker, of course bracket, of a, uh, semicolon. So let's get rid of void update and the annotations to tidy this up a little bit. So you can see when this starts, we activate this particular hint tracker. Now, I did say that you could theoretically do it just once by doing all this in the start. And if you do it, this way would be perfect. So let's start by actually saying, uh, yeah, we want to do this. So let's go back to our scene. Let's try this out. And then we'll do it another way where we can have multiple hints. So let's add a new game object and just add the script to that object. And then add our text to the variable and press play. There we go. Legend has it, blue blocks will add 10 lives and that should fade out in, uh, there we go. Now let's see if it will generate a different hint. Always look around for coins, there we go. So we know it generates a random hint. So let's make it now so as we can have another hint that loads after the one we've just had. And that requires changing it from a start method to an update method and also requires adding in a uh, boolean. So public bool gen hint. Obviously gen is just short for generating and we'll have that by default as false. So if gen hint equals false, then we do the following. So open curly bracket, get rid of the close bracket, but then place it below that start coroutine line. And before that start coroutine line now, inside the if statement, we just say gen hint equals true. And at the very end of our coroutine, we just say gen hint equals false and save. So all we've done is we have done a repeat cycle here to say that once we've displayed this, we wait for nine seconds and then we restart the cycle all over again. So if we head back into Unity, and press play. 
we should get the first hint generated. So always look around for coins. This should disappear momentarily. And we should have a new one appear any second. Which it has not worked. So. Okay. Right. So. We have to look at this logically now. So. Basically, what's happened is because we have re, uh, reset everything, but we've not reset the animation, I do think we have to, in fact, maybe if we turn it off and on again, I wonder if that would work. There's loads of different ways of doing various different things inside Unity. And I always like to try and find cool, creative, different ways. I mean, one, uh, one method of doing it is possibly turn it off and on again. Another would be playing a different state. So tell you what, should we go for the different state one? And let's just see what happens. Uh, so let's go to our text. Let's go to animator and let's go right click, create state, empty. And it's called new state. So let's make that the default state. Now, logically, nothing will play here. It'll just appear up there. But this will give us a chance to actually see that this does indeed work. There we are. See, it changes there. So we know that the script itself is working. It is generating different hints. It is randomly generating them. It's just that little animation to play. So what we could do here is we could say at the very start of the hint tracker, after we've generated the number, after we've generated the description, we could then say um, hint disp dot get component make brackets animator open close bracket dot play in brackets and quotes the name of the animation in this case it was called hint text so hint text and semicolon so that will actually play it as we would want it to be um, so let's uh, save that, head back into Unity, and let's press play. So like I say, logically, what you could do is if you want animation, but you want it to dis uh, just instantly display, uh, you could do what I've just basically done and create that new state. And that new state just is a way of instantly having it right there. And you saw, yes, we're able to now play that animation, even though this is the default we're able to play that hint text animation because we declare it. So if we take all of this and place it up here, and instead of hint text, we have new state, save it, head back to Unity, and press play whenever it's compiled the script. So there's the first one. Red blocks sometimes contain lives. Red blocks sometimes contains lives. Brilliant. So I think it's... There we go. There. So all that basically means is that we just need to click on hint text. In fact, no, I'll tell you what we can do. Let's go to text itself and set the default as zero. And if we press play, it gives us a bit of time between each hint now as well. So like I say, the first hint, always randomized, fades out. We're still loading. Um, so legend has it blue blocks will add 10 lives it's all about the timing of this really but ultimately you're just loading various different hints at different times so that is how we can add randomized hints to your loading screen or faked loading screen they don't always have to fade it can be a little bit fiddly if you just want to have a straight up text giving you a hint you don't need to have the animation but either way that is how we do it so um Hopefully, guys, I will see you in another one of my videos. And thank you very much for watching.